Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. I kind of feel like I've been failing you guys. I've featured the super value packed RX 460 in a ton of my videos and I'm just now getting to unlocking it. Basically, you can install a very simple firmware update to increase performance by like 7 to 10 percent and today I'm going to show you how to do that and if it's worth it. So let's get into it. First off, I highly recommend going over to the first link in the description. Here on overclocking.guide there is a ton of information about this entire process which I highly recommend you read the whole thing. It explains exactly what you're doing to the card, how drivers will be affected, how to actually flash the card, etc. Basically what it comes down to is the RX 460 out of the box only utilizes 896 stream processors and with a simple BIOS flash you can unlock 128 more. This increases performance. So to get started, you'll want to download a software called GPU-Z so you can quickly see your card's specifications. Here you can see on mine that before the BIOS flash, I had 56 TMUs and 896 shaders. These are the numbers we will use to see if the flash worked. Take a screenshot of that. Also click on the button next to the BIOS version to save a copy of your original BIOS. This is important. Next up, you'll have to download your specific card's unlocked BIOS that's at the bottom of that website I talked about. Here you can see that there's actually quite a few cards that they already tested. I have the Strix 4GB version and it was confirmed on the list, so just make sure you download the correct one. Inside the file you download, you'll see a backup BIOS batch file and you definitely want to click on that to backup your BIOS. This will then add a file to that folder of your backup in case things go wrong. Right after that, you can run the flash unlock BIOS batch file and let the command prompt do its thing and you'll be good to go. You can pop up in GPU-Z again and see that you now have 64 TMUs and one 1024 shaders. Now here's where things get a little weird. I'm gonna keep this very basic because every card could be different. As of right now, AMD does a driver signature check and they can check to see if you have a modified BIOS. This makes AMD Radeon settings unusable and you won't actually have a driver to use. I believe some cards will actually work though as soon as the BIOS is flashed. For me and my 4GB Strix card, I had to go to the second link in the description which shows a complete workaround for getting AMD to skip the signature check. Here on this page are exact step-by-step -step instructions for it to work and for me it worked flawlessly. This process involves downloading a modified kernel driver, a patch file, booting windows into a disabled driver signature enforcement mode and a few extra steps. It actually wasn't that hard to do, especially if you've done this kind of thing before, and like I said, it worked perfectly for me. After the steps, you should end up with driver number 16.12.1, which is way out of date. If everything was done correctly, then inside the AMD Radeon settings, you should be able to download the latest driver just like you normally would. For me, it was 17.5.1. After downloading the latest drivers, which may be different for you depending on when you're watching this video, the only thing left to do is benchmark some games and see what kind of performance we got. So as you can see from my results, I got anywhere from a 6 to 10% increase in pretty much everything. All of this for just 30 minutes of work is pretty much worth it in my opinion, but if you're not confident in your skills with this type of thing, I would say it's not worth it. There is always a risk in manually updating your BIOS to any piece of hardware and I definitely don't recommend it to the average user. If you're confident that you could reflash your BIOS back to the original if something did go wrong, then I would give it a shot. At the end of the day, 6 to 10% increase in performance is not that big of a deal, but it's pretty cool to get free performance as well. 
well. Well, that wraps up my unlocking guide for the RX 460. Like I said, make sure you read everything on both those websites before you get started. Personally, I'm pretty excited that I can get even more value out of the RX 460, and it makes the jump to the RX 560 even less worth it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please drop a like down below to help support my channel, and as always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more Zach's Tech Turf videos.